right, Tuesday. Is it? Yeah, Tuesday again. <laughs> Hello, guys. I see that already we have a few of you ready. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. So let me show you what I wanted us to do today. Okay, so I'm going to go. Let me see if I can find it right here. Practice um, master games. Let me do classic. Okay, so I remember we did one of these already. So basically we click on it and they basically have us guess the moves, right? So in this one, for example, you know, they give like some information here and you have to play accordingly and so on. So I want us to do uh, one or two of these together, see how well we can assess the positions, if we can come up uh, with the right moves, make the right practical decisions, because this is what's gonna happen in our games, right? So let's see how that goes. Let's try to do it together. Let me go back because we did that one already. Okay, play like Alekine. And okay, this one is more like the one we did we did the other day. This one, they're gonna be giving you like some hints and we gotta try to play here like Alekine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it like this. Okay, H4, H4, uh, H4. Ghana, hello, welcome aboard. All right, H4. Okay, now I do like H4, guys. The other candidate moves, um, the other candidate moves that we have to consider is 94, bishop is seven. So I know all of us want to open up the H file and so on, but don't forget they don't really have to take. And then this could backfire because our king has to castle at some point and we cannot castle to the queen side. So just something to consider. I have a feeling it is going to be h4, but just consider simply taking, consider bringing the knight over to defend, and don't forget on lesson 187, I think, we talked about that. Transferring the knight to the side where you're going to attack, okay? So if you're planning to do this, knight e4 might be consistent. Who knows? Okay, bishop d3, don't forget, guys, the hidden g5. And even though you take on h7, I don't know if it's worth it to give a piece for a pawn, okay? Where's the timer? I don't see the timer. <laughs> wait, wait, let me, you know, for some reason it's not showing for me. Ah, I see it. <laughs> Sorry guys, it was just too small. You're like, get that out of here, man. Okay, timer is gone. Bishop d3 doesn't work, okay. So let's do h4. I get a feeling that it's gonna be that and what does it say? No, h4, they're saying this is a reasonable move, but he preferred to defend his bishop with another knight. How did he do it? Didn't I say so? I told you that, guys. Yeah, it, it seems like they want us to play knight e4. Yeah, knight e4. Now, f5. And guys, feel free to read the, the hints that they give you, but try to do it without the hints first, okay? And then um, it's just gonna be more realistic. So now we got that one correct. Let me keep track here. Yeah, no timer, that's it. Bishop is seven. Okay, I think with the hint, if you read what, he, what they're saying here, it's gonna be pretty easy to come up with the next move. But at the same time, yeah, I think it's the only move that makes sense right now. Bishop e7, yeah, that has to be the move. Now, they're hitting the knight. If the knight leaves, they're gonna get the bishop. So I need to do in between move, then move the knight. Now, with that said, if I'm playing this in the game, I'll, before I take on e7, I'll think, where is my knight going to go after? So think of that, okay? So bishop e7 has to be the move. Now, what do we do with this knight? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Retreat, be specific. Okay, knight g3. I like knight g3. Knight g5, I don't think is a good idea. h6, you have to. No, it cannot be right. Knight c5, we drop material. We have to consider it. Um, knight c3, cannot be right. Knight d2. Now, the only thing with knight g3, I'm thinking, if I go knight g3, they could play a four. Not sure if I'm concerned about that. Okay, knight d2. 
Nig3, retreat, Nig3, Nig3. All right, so if I'm playing this in a game, I'll be between definitely Nig3 and Nig2, just for the sake of this F4. Right now, it doesn't seem to work, but maybe in the future it does. I don't want that trouble, so I'll just go back and then find a way to bring the two knights to, to the center. So Nig5, Nig3. At some point, they have to move this knight if they want to improve the bishop. So maybe knight d2, knight d5, or even knight d2, knight b3, knight c5. I'm just thinking, where's my knight going to be better for the future, right? So knight d2 is my vote, offer a draw. Yeah, you're right, in the real Lopez, we bring the knight uh, around to g3, very good. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go with, okay, let me go knight d2. Yeah, that's the move. Now b5, the hit in the bishop, we take our time, don't, don't rush. Bishop b3, okay, so here again, candidate moves. This is an aggressive move, I need to do something about it. Candidate moves are bishop b3, bishop d3, bishop takes knight. I need to consider them all. So if bishop b3, not a big deal, nothing changes. I'm still in a very good diagonal. Bishop d3, this diagonal is blocked, but I could at some point play g4. But the thing is that I don't think our plan should be any kind of attack on the king because our king is in the center and it's just a few moves before they can uh, open up the center. So they could do king h8, e5, open up the center and this is just not good. So if I'm white, maybe it's just my style, I would just find a way to do something about my bishop and castle. Then we just play chess. I like this square on e5, I like this square on c5, and I like that I'm putting pressure through the semi-open semi file. We had like two lessons, guys, on this on this C file. And this looks like a Queen's Gambit game. Now, lastly, if we look at the pawn structure, it is telling us we should be attacking or playing on the Queen side. So either Bishop B3, but then A5, A3. Now, the other thing is just taking the Knight. And if they take with the e-pawn, c6 is going to be mine sooner or later. If they take with the c-pawn, I left them with a pretty bad bishop. And I am I have my powerful knights to go to the center. So bishop takes, e takes, I castle. So f4 is not going to be a problem. And then I just find a way to leave their pawns on, dark, on light squares. I don't know. So bishop b3, you're like, just stop talking. Let me do my bishop b3 move. Bishop takes knight. Okay, trade the bishop because every pawn is on the light squares. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we were saying. Yeah. Take the knight. Okay, Richard has spoken. That's the move. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, bishop d5 is the move. And it has to be that, yeah. It has to be. It has to be. Look at this pawn structure now. So I'm, it's not about... Remember, rule of simplification is not about what you capture, it's about what's left on the board. So now I'm left with two knights that could occupy the dark squares. They only have one minor piece to control the dark squares. So, makes sense. Um, okay, white pieces to move. This next move to be a gift, but we could easily just do something else in a real game. So take your time, white pieces to move. <laughs> you saved us. Uh, yeah, very important. Your brain is always going to unconsciously know what the action is, where you should be uh, focusing the most, but you have to see the whole board, of course. Okay, so queen c6, queen c6. So two of you said the same move, so that has to be good. Knight, queen c6, I'm thinking, what could they do? They could do knight b6. Oh, but you take on b5. So queen c6, they have to play rook c8. And then what's the follow-up? What's the follow-up? Because I could even play... Now, be careful, be very, very careful in general with one-move threats. Especially here, I get a feeling that my queen could get trapped. But I like it, I like it. Queen c6, rook b8. I don't think I'm going to get trapped. But what's the follow-up? Okay, queen b3, getting out of the file, and then rook c7. Knight b3, I like it. I like knight b3 as well. K 
castling. I think if I'm playing this, <laughs> if I'm playing this, I would just go, I would just castle. I mean, it's interesting to leave the king in the center, but you know, there's this rule. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I heard or read somewhere that when you're de debating if you should leave the king in the center of, or castle it, or castle, um, you should count how many points your opponent has left in good pieces, right? Like knights, bishops, rooks, queens. If they have more than 10 points, they say you castle. Less than 10 points, it's safe to leave the king in the center. I don't know if it's set on stone or if it makes sense, but I like to use it from time to time. So here they have too many pieces, so I would just castle the king. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to castle. It's not like they, like they could do anything. If you remember the lesson we had on evaluating positions, we talked about short-term and long-term factors. This file, the uh, backward pawn, pawns fixed on the light squares, this is long-term. So it's not like they're gonna fix it in one move. So I would just castle, and then my other rook could come into the game as well. So let me see. Knight b3, b3, queen c7. Yeah, this is, I don't, I, I just feel it's just too premature. I, I, it cannot be right to go for the attack when you're not ready. If your king is in the center, you shouldn't do that. There's another principle that says, if you're not ready for the, for the attack, in this case, your king is in the center, you shouldn't create any, any complications, okay? All right, so we castle. And there you go, that's the move. Castle, then a5, and now I like everything that you guys said. Now I like everything that you said. Knight b3, knight c5. Knight e5 cannot be right. Knight b5, knight e5 is just premature. Knight b3, right before they play a4, makes sense. Okay, let's try a4, okay. <laughs> I wanna try a4. <laughs> okay, a4 is not the move. Let me see, they always give some feedback. They say, there's always better way to improve your d2. Okay, they gave us to us. So they're saying a4 is a mistake and there is a better way to improve the d2 knight. So that's it, okay, okay. So let me put it back. Can, can I put it back? Yeah, knight b3, that's a move. And now they're hitting the knight, so knight c5. So we're not concerned about rook c8 because they did not play bishop b7, rook c8, or bishop a6. So knight c5, that's a given. They take, and now very important decision. Some of you might seem, might find this like, oh, this is easy, but I'm, I, I see people all the time messing this up. So how should we capture on c5? Okay, I got pass pawn, so that means take with the pawn, you get a protected pass, no, you get a pass pawn. All right, I'll give you guys a few, a few minutes. Let's see what you got. And by the way, this is something that I learned, <laughs> I finally got, got under control a little bit late, I would say. Queen, queen. Move the rook to e1, we're down at night. We gotta take that knight. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, right? Who would know the answer to that? Do we take with the pawn or do we take with the queen? Okay, Pedro, 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 if not, uh, Pedro at the end said, uh, taking with the pawn, taking the queen out of the board, black be better with the bishop versus knight, queen takes e5, queen, queen c7, okay, take with the pawn, okay, so let's talk about this, guys, and I might be wrong, but let me tell you, this, is, this one was a reflex, I didn't have to think about it because I've messed that up before, and I finally understood the idea. So, when I was first getting started, any time I would say take with the pawn, this is a pass pawn. But then, as I started to learn more, I realized a pass pawn, especially if it's not a protected pass pawn, doesn't mean it's not as powerful as we think. Why? They could block it, and that's the end of it. It's gonna get stuck there. Then, 
When you take with the pawn, your opponent is going to play e5, powerful center, e4, f4, and before you know it, you get checkmated and that pawn didn't lead to anything. So that's something to keep in mind. Instead, we keep our opponent without any counterplay. We take with the queen, we continue to control the file. Again, if we go back, I think it's lesson 137, we talked about evaluating positions, short-term factors, long-term factors. Having control over an open file, having a powerful knight in the center is long-term. So this is just, you cannot go wrong with that. And the best thing about this is that your opponent doesn't get any counterplay. Now, with all of this talk, now probably the move is D takes E5, but this is the logic that I try to follow for the most part. I hope that that makes sense. I hope that that, that makes sense. Ah, uh, let me see. Okay. And then Roberto said, without the queens, maybe the bishop is better. If you visualize this, this bishop is never going to be better. It's just blocked by its own pawns. My knight is going to be a beast on E5. So that's the reasoning behind it. Now, let me see. Exacto, exacto. Entonces, las negras que están ahí sin hacer nada, de pronto tienen un plan, ¿no? So, guys, um, what he was saying is that, that we just give, we give control with the center. And I was saying that the black pieces that were had nothing, if you're playing as black, it's really painful. All of a sudden, you have a plan after they take on C5. Mm, okay, okay. Let's do it. That's the move. Perfect. Now, <laughs> again, how do we take? Yes, we take with the rook. Only, only open file is ours, and the knight is coming to e5. Now, knight e5 or rook c1, I don't think there's a big difference. Or maybe there is. Okay, I'll go with rook c1. This one I'm not even going to ask you, because I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, rook c1, knight e5. Yeah, these moves are just whispering to be played. Now, rook c7. I like rook c7. Yeah, why not? Does this make anything, any sense? Yeah, I like, I like rook c7. Exactly, exactly. That's just a monster where it is. Now, again, I mean, still, we can easily blow this. We could easily make mistakes, right? So, rook c7, I'm thinking, is there any other candidate move? I looked into this, doesn't promise anything. Rook c7, what could they do? Rook b7. Mm. Now, there are also ideas with f4, just really fixing these guys. a3, nah. I don't want to open up anything on this side. Okay, let me pay attention to this. Okay, rook c7, rook c7. Trading bishop? No, 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 no. I don't want to touch that. What do you mean trading bishop? Trading rooks? <laughs> G4. Mm. Thank you, sir. By the way, we are actually on YouTube. Guys, those of you who are not familiar, um, we have a YouTube channel that is basically a course, step by step. Lessons are numbered. We have already over 190 lessons out. So just check it out, okay? Same name that we have on Twitch. Rook c7, rook c7. Yeah, we cannot go wrong with rook c7. Yeah, all the candidate moves. This f4, someone mentioned g4. I don't think it's time for that yet. Mm, no, didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. So they're saying, this is a good move, but he preferred to move a pawn to help him centralize his king. How did he do that? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, they're saying, no rush. Let's improve the king. Now, let me see if I put that back. Perfect. All right. Makes sense. Another uh, principle, guys, that maybe you're not familiar with is that when we get to an endgame and we need to activate pieces, let's say we have rook, knight, and king, right? And they are back here. I think we have a short on this on YouTube. But basically, you want to activate your pieces by order of how valuable that, the value, right? So the rook is five points. The knight is three points. How many points do you think is the king in the end game? Does anyone know? Like we learned it's infinite, no points, but we actually have a point value for the king in the end game based on how useful the king is. So if you know it, let me know in the comments, okay? All right, F3. Yeah, I like F3. I'm between F3 and F4. F3 is more flexible, to be honest. 
exactly yeah 3.5 so the king is going to be 3.5 so if i have to decide between do i activate the rook first the knight or the king i would start with the rook then the king then the knight and then i look at the pawns and, and so on okay king f1 king f1 no no look they said you have to move a pawn to centralize the king and besides this is not even possible roberto what's going on roberto so f3 or f4 i like the flexibility of f3 so yeah that has to be the move now this is a no-brainer no counterplay for your opponent i'm not gonna take to allow them to activate the rook so we just keep it fixed that's it and pawns on the same color as the bishop in contrast our pawns can never be attacked by that bishop so h6 now do we activate the king or rook c7 okay let's activate the king rook c7 i would have played rook c7 a long time ago um I don't think this is good for them. All right, let's go with that, okay? We're gonna go with that if it's wrong, it's wrong. And besides, at this point, I don't think any of this move is gonna be wrong. It depends what he wanted to do at the moment he was when he was playing the game. So let's go with rook c7. No, okay. So let me see what they say. This is a good move. You see, it's a good move, but he preferred to gain space with a pawn move, okay? So we're gonna gain space with h4 then yeah that's set gaining space now h5 no no wait wait. how about rook c7 because i think rook c7 all this time they did not play it because of rook b7 and we don't want to trade rooks right so it has to be rook c7 now no oh, come on um king g3 oh king g3 king, king f4 makes sense King g3, nice, nice. Jose is in the house. Now, king f4, king f4, h5, rook c7. Ah, rook c6, nice. But you know, if I'm gonna do that, I'll do rook c7, and then the other rook that is doing nothing, I'll bring it to c6. But you know, I, I was not even considering the c6 square, at least not for a rook. Mm, okay, let me do h5. No, it's a blunder. There's a better move. Try to find a way to invade. <laughs> Too bad you cannot read the whole thing, guys. It says, try to invade the 7th rank. Again, I don't think the evaluation is going to be too different, but yeah, rook to the 7th rank now. Bishop b5. That's another thing. If you're playing this in a, in a tournament game, by the time you get to this end game, you're probably already exhausted. So it's important that you double check and you try to drink some water, go to a bathroom, come back, because we cannot blow this. We know a better position, but it's very easy to blow it. Okay, rook c6 now, not safe. <laughs> h5, nope. Now, it'll be interesting to continue to work on the dark squares. Rook c5, maybe it's not the kind of move that they're looking for. Rook e7, dark square as well. Oh, but they could do rook e8. No, no, no. So rook c5, king f4, h5. h5, I think we've already tried it. So those will be my top candidate moves. Okay, let's go with queen f4, guys. So king f4, rook c5, or rook a7. Let's see. Nope. Okay, so it says, this is a good move, Pedro. So we're good. Um, but he preferred to activate his c1 rook. How did he do it? Okay, so this time I got it. This time I got it. So... Rook c5, there you go. We activate the rook. Now king f4. Or now h5. Okay, now it's the move that you guys said before. Rook c6, going after the weak pawn. Little by little, they keep grinding it. So rook c6, also you're giving your opponent chances to make mistakes. So it has to be rook c6. There you go. Now this rook is tied up to the bishop. This one tied up to the pawn. Time to bring the king and the, and the knight. All right, guys, I'm going to leave this one up to you. Would you bring the king or would you bring the pawn? I keep saying the pawn has to come before the, the king, but we'll see. Uh, like the pawn move, yeah. I think it's safe to go with pawn h5, knight g6. This is almost like sook's one for the black pieces. No. Good move. Now, the good thing is that every time we play h5, it's not a good move. Probably you could have done it. It's not going to change anything. 
but they're saying he preferred to centralize the knight first. How did he do it? Centralize the knight? Oh, we pro did we improve the king first? Okay, king f4. Okay, okay, guys, I, I misread before. It was not centralized the knight, the knight was already centralized. Centralized the king. My bad. Okay, so anyways, king f4 was played, king g8. We continued from here. Take your time, come on. Now here, there's only one move that makes sense. Only one. Come on. Yeah, this has to be the move. <laughs> hello, hello. No, no, I mean, you could go with the rule that we said before with the 10 points. In this case, it's about you calculating. Okay, can they really get to my king? I don't think so. They don't have a dark square bishop. They don't have a knight. Like, this bishop can never get to my king. Rooks, there are no lines to get to the king. So, this is like not really leading the charge. I don't think the king is going to help us deliver checkmate. Sometimes it could. It's more about getting ready for that endgame, where if I need to simplify everything, my king is going to be already in the center. Now, here, guys, the only move that makes sense to me is rook f7. And now they cannot do this or I take the bishop. They cannot do this or I take the pawn. So, rook f7 followed by rook uh, by doubling up the rooks is just unstoppable. So, <laughs> I was inspired. I was like, this has to be the move. Come on. <laughs> H5, yeah, it has to be H5. It's not, if it's not Juana, it's her sister. H5. There you go. Hitting the pawn. No counterplay. I know that if you're playing Blitz, you'll be like, oh, get the pawn. I'm going to do complicated game. No, no, no. So G, G3 or G4? Let me know, guys. I think, what I, would, I think I know what I would do. But you let me know. Should we go pawn to G3 or pawn to G4? Mm. Yeah, Sooks 1. Sooks 1. Nice, nice, nice. G4. All right. Now, I think I'll go G3, <laughs> but that's just me. And look, going back to what you asked before, you were saying, we're talking about uh, leading with the king. If I do G4 and they take, all of a sudden they might have something to hit the king. No need. Don't give them anything. If I'm black, I'm looking for that edge. This bishop F1 is desperation. Give me something. So if you do a move like G3, I get nothing. There's no counterplay for me. Yeah, G3 stops everything. No counterplay, no counterplay. Perfect. That said, now rook f7. Yeah, now we got it. We double up on the seventh rank. And now how do we finish this, guys? How do we finish this? Still, in this position, any of us could mess it up. So we have to be accurate now. This is a good moment if you have the time. Stand up, go get some water, come back, refresh your eyes, make sure that you don't make any silly mistakes. Active pieces. Tactics are going to be in the air soon. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, knight d7, knight d7, rook g6. No, okay, knight g6, knight g6. Yeah, I like g4. I mean, I thought of g4, but again, they take all of a sudden rooks could just go rook f7 i mean rook f8 pinning the rook to the king and i don't want to help him i don't want to trade anything look at these rooks they're just too good to trade them for these bad rooks um knight g6 hmm. now knight g6, i think it's knight g6 or knight d7 which one is better now think of imagine the knight on g6 what could the knight go after think of the knight on d7 if you remember lesson 188 i think we talked about this. If you're in a critical moment like this, something that I like to do sometimes is imagine, pretend like you have two, three moves back to back. Like you play that your opponent cannot do anything. What would you do to go after the king? Now, I like knight d7, knight f6. And maybe with some ideas of checkmate with knight and rook. I like that better. Knight g6 seems powerful, but I'm not sure what we're going to do after. All right. Hello, hello. John is you still haunting now. Okay, so Richard said it, we go for it. That has to be the move. And now, okay, this I see the I see the 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 final moves already. I know how to win this now. Let's see if you guys can see it. Let me know. Knight f6, beautiful move. Knight f6, if they take mate. Now, 
is this forcing well we're hitting the rook too to be honest so yeah now let's six <laughs> if they move the rook we just take now what if after knight f6 they move the rook we take the pawn they take over here okay try to visualize that try to do that in your head knight f6 rook f8 rook g7 rook takes i'm gonna give you a minute to do it in your head then we do we actually play it out on the board okay <laughs> you see it okay I'll, I'll give you guys a minute let's see who can find it without moving the pieces Mm, no, you cannot take on a6. Oh, wait, wait, you mean check and then take on a6? No, the rook is going to be here. So again, knight f6, rook f8, rook g7, they take on f6. So now it's your turn. Ah, that's it. That's it. That has to be the move. And then we're hitting the rook. The rook can only go back or bring the other rook. Whatever the case is, I'm going to have check and then checkmate. So maybe we're wrong, <laughs> but this has to be it. There you go. Now, if I just go check, check, the king goes away. Oh, well, maybe that works too, and then king e5. But king e5 has to be the winning move here. That's it. Check and checkmate. We got it. All right. So guys, now you know how to find this. One more time, you go to, let me see, was it? Okay, practice. Then you go to Master Games. You could choose either World Championships or Classic Games. And, well, you pick from here. Okay, no challenges coming in, so that means no one is up for a game. That's fine. Okay, I got two now. And, okay, let me take this one here. Black pieces. Okay, let me see. No increment. Okay. Mm. Let me just make sure we're good. Very good. Now, look at this, guys. We started more like a King's Indian defense, but when we play C5, it's looking more like a Sicilian sort of structure. So we have to be aware of that. Mm. Now, backward pawn, but I think we're going to be able to do something about it. Yeah, drop it here, and if you don't mind, drop it on... Okay, drop it here, drop it here in the, not in the chat, because I won't see it in the comments of the stream. And that way I can, because this video probably I'm going to take it down and then edit it and put it back up, back up. Then I could just throw it in there after. I could even put it in the video if you like. So that way it's there forever, okay? Mm. Okay, so now this is getting interesting. No, that's because we just, we messed up too many times. Just too many times. Okay, can we just play 65? Okay, I'm just going to IC6. Now, my opponent is playing perfectly. Just putting pressure on D6. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have played E5. I thought I could play D5 sooner. I don't think it's going to happen. Not today. Okay, so now, what if we just go... Yes, now for me, guys, look at this. I'm probably gonna lose the pawn. So my only chat here is counterplay. I need to create some counterplay. Mm. 
So I'm like, get the pawn. They're still behind in development. Let me see if I can create something. Let's see. Alekhine is not happy with what we did today. It was just too bad, too bad. Now guys, honestly, most of the moves that we missed, they were good moves anyways. It was, it's not what he played, but... Okay, this is a free knight. So it looks like they gave us something at the end of the day. Okay, we're up a piece. Now we're the ones who want to simplify the game. No counterplay for our opponent, right? Um, okay, weak pawn. Let's go for it. They gave us an edge. Now we're gonna play like like a grandmaster. Well, we're gonna try to activate the pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, ugly move. I'm not so happy with it. But. They go up, we could take with check and then we're back. Activate the king. We talked about this today. Thank you, Mr. Alekin, or Alekin, however you pronounce it. Um, Okay, I don't want to trade too many pawns. Not too many pawns. Okay, so knight f5. All right, guys, we got that one. Got a little bit lucky there, but again, just looking for that counterplay. Nos vemos, nos vemos. Take care, take care, guys. Have a good one.